Okay, this is going to be a short lesson on how to generate random numbers in C++. The first thing you're going to need to do is include the appropriate libraries. For starters, you're going to need to include the standard library from the C programming language. Because remember, C++ is a superset, okay? Now, there are many different versions of this in include. You might see something like this. If you go and look this up online, you might see that, all right? This is the actual C version. This is kind of like the C++ included version, which is really, for our purposes, the same. So if you see this, it is this, for our purposes, okay? Now the other thing you're gonna need to do is include C time, which same situation, there's a time.h for this one. And then we're gonna need to include the IO stream, okay? This is what we're gonna use to get the functions for random numbers. This is what we're gonna get um, our time function so we can set the seed for random numbers. And this is what we're gonna use to observe those numbers. The next thing we're gonna do is use our um, namespace for the standard library. And we're gonna start by showing why the code needs to be so long, okay? In the C standard library, you get a function called rand. Now rand is going to print out a quote unquote random number based off a seed number, okay? Now that sounds really complicated. So let's observe what this looks like here. Let's give this a run. Come on, there we go. And we get this number, a very, very, very long number. So what happens when I run it again and again and again, we're seeing the same exact number each and every time, okay? That does not appear to be random, okay? The problem with the way this is designed is rand is based off, again, a seed number, okay? This seed number needs to change every time we run the program in order for us to give the appearance of randomness, okay? Now the way we do that to give that appearance is we use what's called srand, which is the, you know, think of it as a seed for the random function, and we need to change that number. Now again, if we just pick a number, we run into the same exact problem, right? We need the number to be different every time, which is why we use the current time. So when you call time of zero, which comes from the C time file or the C time header, you get the current time. And so every time you run the program, the current time will be different because the time is always moving forward, okay? Now that's not random, right? The current time is not random. But if I pull the current time down to a nanosecond, I can get the appearance of random numbers. So we're setting this function to use a different seed number based off of the current time, which we need this line to do. Now let me put that semicolon on there. And now let's run this again after I compile it. And we can see different, different seed number each time. Okay. All right. Now this still, this number doesn't look very helpful, right? Like this number, or, you know, if you're doing a dice game, you need one through six, right? This number is super long. How do we cut this number so we can have a one to six or a one to 10, a one to hundred, etc.? That's where we use the modulus operator. So I'm gonna take that number that we get here and I'm going to take the modulus of it and I'm gonna take mod 10. And the reason why I'm gonna do this is when you divide by, for instance, 10, you cannot have a remainder that exceeds what you're dividing by, right? So if I say nine divided by four, that's a remainder of one, right? 10 divided by four, remainder of two, 11 divided by four, a remainder of three, 12 divided by four, we're back to no remainder, 13 divided by four, we're back to a remainder of one. We're setting a limit on what the highest number could be when we take the modulus of something. So here we're gonna set a high number of 10. Now what ends up really happening is you can't actually get 10. You can get zero to nine. So let's watch that. Now let's use a for loop here and oh man, the reason why we're gonna use a for loop is so that we can do this a ton of times to kind of prove this upper uh, threshold and this lower threshold. 
So we run this again, and you can see 100 numbers. We see lows of zeros. We see highs of number nines, and that's it. Okay. Now, if you want to change that, though, like what if you want 1 to 10? Well, add a 1. Add a 1 to whatever that result is. So now if the result is 0, it becomes a 1. So you change your lower limit. And if you get a result of 9, it becomes a 10. So let's run that. Let's see if we can observe that. I'm seeing a 10 now, and I'm seeing 1s, and I'm not seeing any zeros. So that's working. Okay, and if you change this 10, we can get even higher numbers. So let's put 10,000. And let's compile and run it again. Okay, and now we're getting numbers between 1 and 10,000. Okay, now I'm using the for loop to generate a ton of them. You don't always need to, to do that, right? Most of the time you just need to generate one. This is that line that's going to generate it. Okay, that's going to really help you get to, you know, one between a number but do not forget to set your seed. If you don't set that, you're just gonna get the same number every single time you do this, okay? Now, one more recap. The C standard library is needed for the RAND and the SRAND function. The C time function is needed to get the current time. And then IO stream is always is used for our C out, okay? So this is a basic way of generating random numbers. I hope you got something out of this and I will see you guys next time.